Fala, Nick Fans! Beleza? Sou Victor Hatba, aqui do canal Nick Fans Brasil, galera! Hoje, today, again, people, again! Vamos estar aqui, ó, recebendo no canal Nick Fans Brasil, simplesmente aqui um representante né, do canal, talvez o mais popular, né, o mais famoso, famous channel, né, desse mundo, que é o Nick Fans TV. E nós estamos aqui com quem? Ó, oh, só, por favor, please, uh, your name, I, I talk correct, Alex Tretaros, Alex Tretaros, forgive my, 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 my English, man, I, I, I talk this first, né, I, I want to talk your name correct, man. You got it right the first time, Alex Tretaros, you got it, you got it. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Cara, man, welcome, welcome, really, man, again, to the Nick Fans Brasil channel. Really, really loves you in this channel. Appreciate it, Victor. Thank you for having me back. I'm, I'm happy to be back here for Nick Fans Brazil. You guys run a, a great operation over here. I'm happy to be back on and uh, talking Nick's with you and uh, talking to your, to your listeners. So let's get it going. Oh, great, man, great. Let's talk about the Nick's. So... Um, first, uh, I talk in Portuguese for Brazilians, my, my questions, uh, after, mm -hmm. né, uh, I talk in English for you. Uh, first question, né? vamos começar então. Primeira questão, Alex, uh, vamos falar então sobre draft, certo? Qual a sua opinião, Alex, uh, sobre o draft deste ano, né, para os Knicks, quais, e quais são os seus jogadores favoritos, né, e quais os realistas que você acredita para pick 11? In English for you. What's your opinion, Alex, about draft né, for the Knicks in this year? Uh, players, favorite players, realistic players, né, for pick <laughs> 11, Alex. Oh, man. So for the 11th pick, I mean, for the Knicks, it's a, it's a solid area to be in. I mean... Obviously, there are fans that hope that we could have been in the top four to land someone like Jaden Ivey because you see what he's doing or you saw what he did at Purdue and he's getting the comps to, towards like a John Moran type of player. And sure, that'd be great to have him on the Knicks. Maybe the Knicks can trade up to go get him. But if that's not going to happen, then they stay, stay at 11. There's a the couple of players that I like. AJ Griffin out of Duke. He's someone I like. I'm looking at wings this, this, just to say, just to start off with, I'm looking for wings. So players that could play uh, the shooting guard, the small forward, and potentially even do some uh, small power forward playing, playing small uh, small ball uh, four, power forward, however you want to call it. So looking at guys like AJ Griffin, looking at uh, Benedict Matherin, Johnny Davis, those are my top three guys, and I'm like I'm liking so far. Uh, we just had Chris Persianen from Nick's uh, Nick's Film School, who does draft class over there. He came on the show. Which just dropped today for for Knicks Jets etc. Another podcast that that I host and Tari Eason from LSU is another player that I'm looking forward to that maybe the Knicks can draft this year. So those are my top four guys. Really looking for guys that are capable of playing multiple positions who are able to score and just complement RJ Barrett. And my top favorite guy is Johnny Davis from Wisconsin. I like his ability to create his own shot. I like Who's that he's defender? a dog on defense. He is a very good defender. I like everything about him. Uh, the fact that he was able to shoulder the load over at Wisconsin, somebody that is can do that, right, and still lead his team to, to wins, that is a trait that the New York Knicks need. Not that they don't have it. Like they have Emmanuel quickly, R.J. Barrett, Obi Toppin, guys who are, who, who are winners, guys who, who will work hard to win and have demonstrated that throughout their college careers. But adding another guy to that, to that concoction is what I want to see. And – Johnny Davis, especially a guy who's able to score in the mid range, which we haven't had on the New York Knicks in a while. That that's my my guy right there. Even though you know on the show for Knicks Fan TV, I said Benedict Matherin could be potentially a better fit because he could play off ball. I like I like Benedict Matherin. I like his athleticism, but Johnny Davis is my guy. And the concern is more so: do you want him? Uh, do, you do you want another on do you prefer, ball? Do you, do, who do you prefer, Johnny uh, Davis? Uh, that that uh, Benedict Maturin, really? I I, pre I prefer I prefer Johnny prefer? Davis, 
I prefer Johnny Davis over Benedict Mathurin because I like Johnny Davis's ability to create his own shot. Um, oh, yes, but I understand, yes. but, but I understand the fit. I understand the Knicks maybe wanting to go with Benedict Matherin because of his ability to play off ball, which we didn't really get to see Johnny Davis do it at Wisconsin. So I can understand going in either direction. I like both of those guys. I wouldn't be upset with either one of those guys, but Johnny Davis is my guy. That is the guy. I, 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 I like it. I agree with you. I agree with you about, uh, John Davis. It's a, a great player, great player. Uh, I, I make it uh, in Nick Fans Brazil channel uh, a lot of videos né, about the these players né? and uh, Johnny Davis. Uh, I like I like him. Uh, uh, that Benedict Maturin, uh, it's complicated because uh, Benedict Maturin, uh more chance uh, pick seven, pick eight, eight, pick pick night, that pick eleven. Né? But for me, Benedict Maturin, it's a dream. Uh, hmm. No. Who do you uh, like? Really? Who do you like more? Who do you uh, like more, Benedict Matherin or Johnny Davis? Uh, not dream. Uh, I I prefer I prefer Maturin, but okay, uh, Maturin it's a dream. I, pre <laughs> I prefer <laughs> really uh, Johnny Davis. But man, uh, how do you think about uh, Dyson Daniels? Because Dyson Daniels, uh, I hear. Um, Comparated with uh, Josh Gidden, nah? and uh, uh, I hear too uh, Mark Berman uh, post uh, Dyson Daniels comment. It's a, I, I a good defender. I good defender, Knicks. Uh, sabe? Uh, do you know uh, about Dyson Daniels? Uh, I like the, this player, uh, for example, uh, Mal Malachi Braham. Nah? But, but uh, what's your opinion about about uh, Dyson Daniels, for example? So I like Dyson Daniels. I think he could be a solid NBA contributor. I think he's more of an off-ball player, uh, more of a connector, someone similar to Lonzo Ball, Tyrese Halliburton. I would even like. I can see the. I can see why some people would give him the comp to Malcolm Brogdon. Although Malcolm Brogdon can get to the hoop more, just gets to the hoop more than uh, what um, Dyson Daniels has shown already. And I and I get the. I, I get the. Uh, the giddy uh, comparisons because they're Australian and whatnot, but Dyson Daniels is okay. I'm not really, he doesn't excite me as, as the other players that I listed between Griffin, Mathurin, oh, Johnny Griffin. Davis, or, or Tari Eason, because the one, his shot, his jump shot is questionable. Like even though he's been showing off well at the combine, I don't know if it's going to translate to the NBA, you know, drills doesn't really necessarily mean it's going to go, it's going to work in the NBA as a rookie, and he still needs to work on that aspect of his game. But if you're looking at wanting to add defense, someone who can guard multiple positions, I understand that. And I understand that he's a defensive guy and Tibbs will love that. And he can handle the rock somewhat. He wouldn't be your traditional point guard. He's just another guy who can handle the rock and, and initiate the offense if you need be. But I need someone who can also create offense for himself. And we haven't really seen him do that and an efficient enough level that I'm that that he really excites me for the Knicks to draft him. I wouldn't be upset with taking him, but if the options are AJ Griffin, Benedict Matherin, and Johnny Davis, I want one of those three guys before Dyson Daniels. Even Tari uh, Tari Eason too. Like I'd take Tari Eason um, o over. I, I don't know. Over Dyson I, Daniels. I, I, I I I don't know much about Tari. Tari just. Uh, 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 I I I I won't uh, make a video for for him in this channel, Tari. I don't know. I don't know nothing. <laughs> but uh, uh, Alex Stratarus, what do you think about Malachi Brahan, your high state? Oh, I think he's okay. I think he's a fine player. I think he's a good three and D guy. Um, not some of that also really excites me, uh, coming into this draft. I think he's solid. I, I think he'd be a little bit redundant next to someone like Quentin Grimes, who we have on this team. doesn't really, to me, to me, and I'm not, I'm not a draft expert, but to me, it just seems like we already have Quentin Grimes, who I'd rather the Knicks invest in over Malachi Brannon. And I, I'm looking for a guy who once again, can cover multiple positions, which I've seen from AJ Griffin. I've seen from uh Johnny Davis I've seen from Benedict Matherin even Dyson Daniels Brand Malachi Brandon 
not really cutting it for me, but he's an okay prospect in my eyes. I, I he just doesn't he just doesn't excite me as the other prospects that I've listed. Uh, oh, Nick's, uh, for example, uh, needs desperate, very desperate about PG. But in draft, uh, Nick's uh, get it uh, uh, a center. Uh, I, I saw, uh, for example, uh, Jalen During, Memphis Tigers, uh, Mark Williams from Duke. What you uh, what you do you think about these guys? Uh, do do you like it? Uh, Jalen Duran, Memphis Tigers, uh, Mark Williams from Duke. Yeah, I like both of those guys. Once again, it's just I'm not looking to draft them at 11. Uh, I get that the, the you're looking at those guys because the question of Mitchell Robinson and whether or not the New York Knicks are going to resign him. I, I totally understand that, but using the 11th pick to replace Mitchell Robinson. Uh, the center is the is, you if you you're, the center is the quarterback of the defense right as your point yes. guard is the quarterback of the offense so for Tibbs if he's going to draft the center that and you're looking for him to play he's not starting he needs both of those guys I think uh, both those guys have a lot of talent I think they'll be good NBA players uh, they have Durant as, as a higher upside because of his athleticism. He has an NBA ready body, uh, you know, so that's why Duran, some people will go with him. He's also younger. Mark Williams, a little bit more polished. Uh, granted, he's a little bit older, but he is more polished. I like both of them. I think both of them are going to be good defensive players. I think both of them can give you some offense, you know, that Mitch doesn't really give you. You know, I think with either one of them, you couldn't go wrong later in the draft. I'm not willing to go for 11, considering that we got Mitch in the second round. And also, I think that you can go find another center in free agency to to cover up for Mitchell Robinson. The Knicks need more playmaking and more offense. And the ah, center is I not agree. the center unless you're getting someone like Nikola Jokic in the draft or Joel Embiid. Would I invest that type of pick into that type of player? These guys aren't really giving me that type of vibe. So I'd look. That's where I go back to. Let's go get a wing. There's not a point guard in here that's going to solve the Knicks point guard problems. So let's go with a wing. Let's go add more depth there and let's figure it out. And there's nothing wrong with having multiple wings. You know, even some people will say that we have Evan Fournier, we have Alec Burks, but those guys are not necessarily the future. They're veterans. Yes. Uh, Alec Burks, this is the last year. Uh, this is the last guaranteed year of his contract. He signed a three-year deal, but two years are guaranteed. The third year isn't. Yep. M. Fournier, he signed a four-year deal. Three of those years are guaranteed, and he's in the sec. He's going to a second year, so he'll have one more year guaranteed after that. Whether or not yes. the Knicks resign them, they probably won't. So it makes sense just to invest in another wing, especially a player that can give you some offense, and that's what I'm looking at. When I look at Duran, I won't look at Williams. They're not necessarily they're not hubs for offense but they can contribute on offense. I'm looking for guys that when they touch the basketball, they're going to create some offense and they, and they can shoulder a load, which is why I like Johnny Davis, because we saw that he can shoulder yes. off a heavy offensive load. So that's where I'm looking at in this draft. The centers are good. I'll be a little upset if the Knicks were to trade back and get two picks, right? Yes. Say, like, say, say for some reason Charlotte decided to trade two of the picks just to move up one. Yeah. And you want to take – if you want to take one of Williams or Duran plus another player, I'll be fine with that. But if you're just using one lottery pick on a center that isn't Nikola Jokic or Joel Embiid, uh, it's not, I, I don't think it's the right decision for the Knicks. But I, I super agree with you about, uh, for example, Johnny Davis. Johnny Davis, uh, I will I will love in the Knicks, man. Really, really. Mm -hmm. I uh, In this month, man, in this month, Really, I will so pray a lot in this draft. The Knicks give give for us a good PG, a good playmaker, man. Really, mm -hmm. really. Uh, I like it. Johnny Davis, Dyson Daniels, Maturin. Nah. Uh, I like, it, for example, Oshai Akbaji, uh, uh, Branham. But Johnny Davis, I, I agree with you. Uh, 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 Johnny Davis uh, and Tom Timbaldo, I, I feel uh, the relationship good with, uh, 
uh, for jo Johnny Davis uh, with Tom Chimbodon. But uh, I, I make a, a next question for you, first in Portuguese. Uh, Alex, nós estamos falando de draft. Né? Eu queria saber qual a sua opinião a respeito da possibilidade que eu vi a falar sobre muitos rumores do Knicks querer negociar a pick 4 com o Sacramento Kings, porque eu vi muitos rumores do Knicks estar apaixonado por Jaden Ivey, né? que tem aquela moral toda de Jamoran 2.0 e etc. In English for you, uh, I want your opinion about uh, the rumors. Uh, Mark Berman and another guys comment with us. Uh, the Knicks in love for Jalen Ivey, né? pick, uh, probably, probably pick four in this draft. Sacramento Kings, uh, né? Sacramento Kings uh, uh, has a famous, né? the, uh, worst famous possible in draft. So uh, I hear the Knicks are uh, interesting uh, in Jaden Ivey and they negotiate uh, pick four. Do you do you how uh, what do you think about these these rumors? Nah? What's your opinion about these rumors? I think the Knicks are interested in trying to move up to four to try to land Jaden Ivey. I think they're going to look at all avenues to see how they can get up there. I don't think it's by any means necessary that they will move up to the fourth to go get Jaden Ivey, but they're going to do their due diligence and figure out what is it going to cost to move up to the fourth pick to go get it. Maybe they go to the seventh pick, right? Maybe they trade with Portland first, get the seventh pick, and, and then flip the seventh pick to go get the fourth pick to make it more palpable for the Sacramento Kings if they're going to drop down in the draft saying, All right, instead of going down from four to 11, you'll go down from four to seven and you trade that with whatever other assets that you need to to go get Jaden Ivey. But I don't think it's by any means necessary. I think there are, I, I think it is realistic, but so I uh, like it would be great for the Knicks to go get Jaden Ivey, but I'm not looking for the Knicks to go mortgage everything to go get Jaden Ivey either. So. It's tough. It's tough, but I don't. I don't think the Knicks are. I don't think. I think if you're going to ask me, what's the realistic, like the percentage wise? I think it's. Well, on a scale, if, I, if it was on a scale of one to ten, ten being very realistic and one being unrealistic, I'm probably going to put it at a two. I'm probably going to put it at a two that the Knicks move up to the fourth pick to go get Jaden Ivey, just because I think they're going to have to move. Uh, heaven and earth in order to go get him. And I don't think they're going to be willing to do that. This, as, as we've seen from this team already, they're, they're conscious about maintaining assets and finding cost, right? They're looking for that, that, perfect, that perfect equilibrium so that way they can get what they want while still getting good value uh, when they make that type of maneuver, whether it's for uh, trading for draft picks, acquiring draft picks, getting a player. It's all about value for them and making sure they have enough assets in the chest because, look, this team is also looking to make a big trade. I mean, you hear the Donovan Mitchell rumors and you're going to need a lot of assets to go get someone uh, like Donovan Mitchell. So I don't think the Knicks are, are willing to unload the chest uh, just to go, unless they believe uh, that player will be a game changer. If they believe... Jay Ivey is that player, then I wouldn't be shocked if they unload if they unloaded all, a lot of assets in order to go get him. But I don't, I don't think that's I don't think that's what they want to do um, because that's a big gamble in order to go in order to just rely on a, on a young player like that to be that game changer. Um, uh -huh. But I think I think they're trying to figure out how much how much is going to cost to move up. Uh Man, I, I will so yeah, it will be so happy, man. Jaden Ivey uh, has an explosion, uh, uh, make the zero like a Ferrari <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. with ball, man. Uh, I like so much, but uh, I agree with you. Uh, I agree. I, I, I think the Knicks uh, in this draft uh, really. Uh, Uh, has a chance uh, take a, a good a good uh, PG for example or uh, AJ Griffin not PG but it's a great shooter man great shooter uh, mm -hmm. AJ Griffin I like him I like him uh, I I saw 
so many highlights uh, from from this player. Né? But I, I believe in these names: Johnny Davis, Tyson Daniels, e Brown. Uh, on the, uh, one this these three guys for me for me uh, Knicks has a, a chance in this draft bem na parte que ele fala do do Johnny Davis né ele diz que que na escolha do, do Knicks talvez o Johnny Davis possa cair e que para ele seria sensacional se o Knicks pegasse o Johnny Davis porque é um jogador que que tem uma defesa muito boa, né? tem um chute de média distância é, muito bom né? e poderia trazer algumas coisas que o elenco do Knicks agora no momento é, não tem. Né? Inclusive na liga hoje, basicamente como o jogo de 3 é, vem, 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 vem sendo mais é, eficiente né? para todas as equipes, poucas equipes têm aquele jogador de média distância, né? E o Johnny Davis tem um chute de média distância muito bom e principalmente uma característica que, o, que já é uma cultura que está tentando se estabelecer no, no, nos Knicks de defesa. Né? Então é um, é um dos melhores defensores dessa classe agora. E o Alex acredita que, que seria sensacional se o Knicks draftasse ele. Né? Para ele é o cara que ele, que ele queria ver com a camisa dos Knicks. Você tinha mencionado a respeito do Benedict McTurin. o Ele... Ele, ele acredita que, que o, o, o Benedict Mattering tem é, um encaixe perfeito com os Knicks, mas mesmo assim, né, que o, o Johnny Davis seria esse jogador que o Knicks deveria draftar. Né, aproveitando até que ele teve alguns problemas é, de lesões e tal, né, o que fez ele cair um pouco nesse, nesse draft, o que seria ideal se o Knicks conseguisse pegar. Porque talvez nesse, em outro cenário ele, ele, teria, ele seria uma escolha bem mais alta. Bem, com relação ao Dyson Daniels, Victor, ele mencionou que é o seguinte, né? É, você tinha até comentado, né, que o Dyson Daniels tinha falado, é, tinha feito um comentário que ele é um bom defensor e é realmente, né? O Alex é, até mencionou que ele consegue defender várias posições ao mesmo tempo, né? Mas que ele, Alex, se tiver disponível jogadores como o AJ, o AJ Griffin ou o Benedict Mattering, ou o próprio é, Johnny Davis, ele vai nessas direções e provavelmente não selecionaria o, o Dyson Daniels, né? A não ser que, que na escolha do Knicks só sobre ele ali no caso, né? O Dyson Daniels, então... E que, basicamente, o, as, os questionamentos que ele tem né, é com essa com a criação que a criação de chutes né o próprio chute do Dyson Daniels né e tal porque o Knicks já sofre bastante com isso né com, com chutadores e ter que, que, for, que ter uma equipe ali e tal né que tenha um bom chute conseguir criar seu próprio arremesso enfim né que seja de, de média distância longa distância né o Dyson Daniels faz tudo em quadro ali tem uma boa defesa mas, por exemplo, tem essa questão com, com o chute que vai ter que melhorar muito, né? E não sabe como isso vai decorrer na NBA. Ele é um cara que veio da Austrália, jogou a, a, a de league ali, mas tem todos esses questionamentos. Inclusive, ele não conseguiria ajudar o Knicks agora, né? Porque é um processo de desenvolvimento de, desse atleta, né? Então, ele faz tudo em quadra, é, tem, tem bom passe, consegue pegar rebote e tal... Ainda tem que desenvolver o corpo ainda, né? para poder jogar na NBA. Mas isso é uma questão que teria que ser, que teria que ser resolvida, né? E, e atualmente tem jogadores mais prontos que podem, talvez, ter um teto maior na NBA. E foi o caso que o Alex estava citando, do AJ Griffin, do, do Medic Mattering e do, e do Johnny Davis, né? Que talvez desses jogadores possam cair na escolha dos Knicks. É pouco provável porque tem, como se diz, né? São jogadores muito bons ali que podem cair, inclusive, antes da, da escolha 10. A do Knicks é a, a escolha 11, né? Mas qualquer um desses três que sobrar para o Knicks seria muito interessante. Próxima parte, você menciona o Mark Williams, né? E o, e o, e o Jalen uh, Duran. E, e ele, ele comenta sobre isso, né? Que ele acha que na escolha 11... O Knicks não deveria ir atrás de um, de um center como esses dois jogadores. Mesmo com a questão do Mitchell Robinson, se o Knicks vai, 
se vai acabar perdendo ele ou não, enfim, né? Se vai é, assinar novamente e tal, ou de trocar, qualquer coisa do gênero. Porque é o seguinte, primeiro que, que o Knicks está precisando muito, né? De playmaking ali, né? De jogadas de, de, de drible, jogadores com habilidade e tudo. E ele só iria se fosse algum jogador com uma vibe tipo Nicola Jokic ou Joel Embiid, um, jogador, um center ali que, que distribui alguém diferente mesmo, que possa trazer impacto tanto do ponto de vista ofensivo quanto negativo. Quer dizer, desculpa, ofensivo quanto defensivo. E que nesse contexto, o, nenhum desses dois jogadores é, se enquadra. Né? O Knicks precisaria... É, é, de qualquer forma, buscar de outras formas os jogadores para poder suprir essa carência que a equipe tem, então ele não iria nessa direção na, na, na escolha número 11, né? e ele, ele buscaria outro, outras formas, e ele acredita inclusive que esses jogadores, eles vão precisar de um tempo para maturação, aprender, desenvolver o jogo deles e tal, e que, e que é, o Knicks precisaria de algo emergencial para agora, então seria mais prudente pegar outro jogador na escolha 11 ali, um ala principalmente, ou algum jogador ali que tenha bom chute, boa defesa, e, e porque até tem a questão do Alec Burks, que tem mais um ano garantido com os Knicks, os outros anos não são, e sim também com, como o, o, o Evan Fournier, né? que, que são dois veteranos que não são o futuro do, dos Knicks, então, são jogadores que estão aí para ajudar no processo, de, de desenvolvimento e tal e, e ajudar esses jovens atletas mas que não são o futuro da da franquia, então todo esse contexto faz com que a escolha número 11 é, seja para um, um jogador mais talentoso e tal, que possa ajudar os Knicks com o que os Knicks precisam né? e, e que nenhum desses dois nem o Jalen uh, Duran e nem o, o Mark Williams são esses jogadores Bem, com relação à a, a, a sua pergunta do Jaden Ivey, né, o, o Alex acredita que, que o Knicks teria que fazer dois movimentos, no caso, para poder, é, se for fazer algo assim, né, para poder movimentar, na, na subir né, no poder de escolha, lá, ir para a escolha 4, provavelmente que vai ser a escolha do Jaden Ivey, o Knicks teria que, que fazer uma troca primeiro para poder pegar a escolha 7, depois da escolha 7 fazer uma troca para chegar na escolha 4, né? E teria que fazer é, bastante movimentos nesse 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 draft para poder chegar lá. A questão é que vai depender muito do que que o Knicks entende sobre esse jogador, né? E, e, e o que eles pretendem dar, né? Em troca, porque é o seguinte é é um, é um jogador novo, né? Que ainda vai desenvolver o jogo ainda, né? Mostrou muitas coisas mas a gente sabe que isso é muito complicado, já tiveram outros atletas que, que foram até escolhas mais altas, escolha um, inclusive, né, e que não, não corresponderam na liga, e é muito arriscado você apostar muito alto e dar muitas, é, é, muitos, tipo assim, muitos valores em troca de um jogador que ainda vai ter que provar o seu valor na liga. Né? É um, um, ele, ele, se o Nick entender que ele é um jogador que pode mudar o jogo, né, mudar a história da franquia, talvez seria, seria interessante... Mas é, é algo muito complicado né, de, de se analisar por agora. Né, então ele, ele, acha, ele, ele, se você fosse perguntar para ele qual é a chance de dar certo, ele diria que era metade metade, né? Porque pode ser que, que o Nix é, envolva muitas coisas na troca e que ele não devolva muitas coisas para o Nix, ou o contrário, né? Que ele realmente mude a história da franquia e tudo isso tudo vai depender é, de como as coisas vão, mas que ele não faria nenhum movimento louco por, pelo Jaden Ivey por causa disso, né? E aí, pessoal, este foi mais um vídeo aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Espero que vocês tenham gostado, né? E como é de praxe, pessoal, você, você mesmo que está assistindo pela primeira vez o canal Nick Fans Brasil, não se esqueça de se inscrever, se inscreva aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Não esqueça, né, você que já é inscrito, de ativar o sininho para notificação de novos vídeos e também sempre deixar o seu like, um comentário, compartilhar com os amigos, por que não, para ajudar com que o canal Nick Fans Brasil chegue cada vez em mais e mais pessoas, pessoal. Beleza? Conto com a ajuda de vocês, Nick Fans. Um abraço! Thank <laughs> you.
I do, are you down with the orange and the blue? I'm a Nick 